As uh, John mentioned, I work at Citrix Systems, and I'm uh, blessed to be part of the Netscaler team, uh, working with many of you as well. So I'm going to be really crisp because I have about four minutes and change. I'm also going to be speaking pretty fast, simply because I'm Indian. Um, all right, so, so, um, so just jump, jumping right in, basically, this, you know, everybody looks at the network. It's the fundamental heartbeat of what we deliver as a business. And, uh, and interestingly, what I'd like to bring to our attention is some lessons that we've learned out there. Is like, you know, there's actually two parts of the network, right? There's the part that's internal, and there's the part that's external. When we talk about the network, we mostly talk about the internal network. The external network is obviously things that we sort of leverage on a daily basis. And this is not just Amazon or Akamai, which we tend to leverage. It's also even bread and butter internet pipes from AT&T and so forth. And if you really think about it, right, these guys actually have embedded some true cloud characteristics in their network architectures that we haven't done in the internal network architectures. And so that's, that's really the three big things that I want to talk to you guys about, to sort of like bring that to bear to see you know, some of these actually appeal to you guys. So the first thing is something that I think we all sort of know, right? We get spikes, capacity ebbs and flows, it's not consistent. The external network, if you think about it, whatever mechanism that they use, you know, as the requirements actually change, it actually grows up and down. And you only pay as you go, whether it's an hourly basis, monthly basis, whatever it is. Of course, on the internal network, that's not the case. As the pipe fills up, as your capacity changes over a spiky period and so forth, you try to stretch the box a bit, it doesn't work. What do you do? You bring a bigger box, you forklift it, you buy more blades or whatever it is, and the inevitable happens, which is essentially underutilization, right? So this is the first problem. I think there's a few solutions here. I'll talk to you about it in a couple of minutes. But it's sort of like well known that the network needs to be elastic, right? That's the first dimension. The second dimension is, you know, we all know that eventually it's just not about spiky growth, but there's always going to be consistent growth. It's a good thing to happen, right? So how do you deal with that as an external network? You know, they couple up networks behind them. They scale out. As far as you're concerned, though, it's one seamless network expansion. The key word here is seamless growth, not just infinite growth, right? Now, on the internal side, you tend to rack and stack more boxes. Inevitably, at some point, not only can you not grow to an infinite network size, most importantly, though, you don't manage it as a seamless network. And that's a hard problem that we'll talk about. And so that's, that's like the second big problem here is that on the internal side, we need an architecture to actually sc seamlessly scale up. The third thing, which is sort of like an emerging problem, and may not apply to every one of you guys out there, but definitely applies in the traditional enterprise, is that when you start consolidating things, externally, again, independent of locations, it does look like one logical thing. It gets consolidated. Internally, though, the network consolidation paradigm really hasn't caught up, whether it be virtual networking, software-defined networking, whatever the terms that you use. In reality, even the simplest form factor of changing the number of moving parts, reducing the number of moving parts, hasn't really happened. So those are the three things that I think, you know, if you really boil it down, right, between elastic growth, Seamless expansion and consolidation are the three things I think we can learn from an external cloud network that we need to sort of like design into the internal network. So what are they? So I think let me you know, just sort of cut into the chase. The first one, and this is something that's almost like brain dead that every networking element should actually do, is burn enough capacity into a single box. Take the cogs it, take the margins it, but basically make sure that on demand, with a simple software license key change, you can actually pay as you grow. All right? If your networking element isn't doing this, just replace it with somebody else's. Because I think there are a few guys already doing it. This is just stupid to not do it in this era. The second thing, which is a much harder problem to do, is true clustering. Right? So this is the ability not only just to do ECMP-based load balancing or whatever across your nodes, but also to actually steer your flows, independent of where it lands, across your 10 gigi black plane. And more importantly, to treat it as one seamless network, one single config that's synchronized across all the nodes. And this, this is a pretty hard problem to do. I think it takes a lot of effort to actually get this right, especially with stateful transactions. And the last thing is around consolidation. And I think with a couple of technologies that have emerged, like SRIOE, you know, now you can actually retain the ability to actually have full tenant isolation. Let me move right back there. You can actually have, retain the ability to have full tenant isolation where you actually can consolidate multiple moving parts into one single box so that you can still have delegated administration of each of the instances, but reduce the 10, 20 pairs into one single pair. And it's actually bringing all of these together onto a single platform is essentially, in our opinion, 
I think, a true cloud network. Of course, you know, we at Netscaler, obviously I wouldn't be here talking about this if we haven't done some of this. Beyond just scale up and scale out, I think the hard problem of clustering has actually now been solved with what we call as TriScale now. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to drop by in as well. But if there's one thing to take away, you know, just go back and make sure you talk to your networking elements to at least do two out of these three dimensions using the same platform. Thank you.